Hi, it's Jasmine. You know, that girl who did you know what way before the internet ever existed. Join me and my special guest every week as we talk about anything and everything because nothing is too taboo. So punch your ticket and get on board the crazy train with me, Jasmine St. Clair. All aboard! Oh my God, I finally figured out Zoom. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. This is awesome to have you on here. I've got to say, like, I've tried using a bong. I'm not much of a person that smokes um, too much of anything, really. So I tried it with hash. And for some reason, I always cough. And it just, I don't know if it's sure. a type of bong I use, if it's just some kind of cheap thing. <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, um, picking out the right surfboard for whatever skill level you're at. You know, you're going to want to have something that floats really well when you're at a beginner level and you're going to want to have something that you can shred on if you're like an expert. Right. So if, if you're given the wrong bong and wrong temperatures and wrong whatever, then, yeah, you might have a bad experience, which kind of taints you forever, which, you know, that's your path. You know, so so but yeah, you can also use a bong as just a talking point at your house, similar to what you might use a painting or a sculpture uh, that you put up. So with that, um, it's it's kind of like, you know, for we do a crossover, a lot of the pieces that we, we make are, are, are bongs. Yes, but it's also a piece of art. It's also a, a spiritual object, you know, for America, you know, we kind of lack, in my opinion, some tradition and some you know, spirituality that, that could be well, uh, well received here uh, by our, our society. And I think the bong itself uh, has this, you know, kind of feel of some, you know, sacrimonial object, you know, and when you use it, it's kind of requires a ritual, especially, especially for versed bong users. Um, you know, they have a little way that they do things and set it up and use it and then clean it out afterwards and put it away. They might even name their bong. You know, you've heard of this before. No, I have okay. not. <laughs> okay. I think not whole doing... thing, there's a whole, there's a whole thing going on. And so, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the bong itself also for, as a male, uh, you know, when we, when we grow up uh, and we turn, you know, whatever age we can get, you know, get is our first real retail experience going to the store and spending our own money. Uh, a lot of the times it's on a bong and it's that, that, that experience at a head shop counter that you get with the guy behind the counter, the smells of the incense, the, the tactile of, of the whole experience that they take, it's a lifetime takeaway. Uh, so, you know, I've been making glass for 30 years, uh, making glass bongs. And I get a lot of stories of people that come to me and say, um, Oh, the Jerome Baker was my first bong I ever used. And so it, they have this story wrapped around it, where they bought it, uh, uh, what they named it and who uh, broke it in the end. And, you know, uh, and whether it was a policeman or whether it was mom taking it away or whether it was, you know, dropped on the ground, you know, or thrown in the dumpster or whatever the different stories are, you know, good bongs do go to heaven. And so that's something that, that, I, that I tell people to take solace in. <laughs> it's so sweet. I, I went on your Instagram and I saw all of the different glass works you do. And it's amazing. It's all really beautiful. But is this what you really wanted to do growing up? Because I know when we want when we want to be something, we talk about it when like nine or 10. It's like 10 or 11 different professions we think about. But what did you originally want to be? when you grew up? If sure, that's a question. I love that. That's, that's, that's well-versed. Uh, so like when growing up, I, I drew a lot and my, my attraction was to the people in the art, art class and the art program over there in that building. And um, I always, you know, kind of was attracted to different art uh, mediums, whether it's been printmaking or painting or something like that. So I always had wanted to do something in art. And by the time I got to college, I went to the University of Oregon and uh, down the street from the college is an old man named Bob Snodgrass. And Bob Snodgrass uh, was the first guy uh, that made these incredible glass pipes that we, we, we now use today. So basically everything we do now is based on what he taught us. And he's kind of the great, the grand poobah, the grand wizard of this whole thing. And I was lucky enough to be there, right time, right place, in college, interested in art and kind of get under his wing. And I was number seven in a long lineage of um, apprentices from uh, Bob Snodgrass. And uh, he's a great, uh, great resource. He's, he's alive and well up in Eugene, Oregon. 
And um, he is the wizard of this, this industry, of, of this glass pipe industry. And before him, there wasn't um, this, this big fad that we have today or this big, you know, I call it the Piper movement. Uh, there was a very uh, a hot movie that came out on Netflix back in, I want to tell you, 2008 or something like this. And it's called um, uh, Degenerate Art. And Degenerate Art is an incredible documentary about this glass pipe scene and kind of lays out how it how it came about. And it's a really kind of, you know, great set of circumstances that, that made it happen. And I'm a glass pipe maker in Las Vegas. Uh, we have a, a small crew in there, you know, manufacturing really, you know, high end, really cool glass bongs and pipes. And I have a permit from the city of Las Vegas to um, manufacture those. And, um, you know, back my history is I started making glass in 1991, like I said, and uh, by 2003, we were doing $4 million a year in volume of sales, 70 employees in Eugene, Oregon. And on uh, one day, it was February 23rd, uh, 2003, they broke my doors down and arrested me for manufacturing drug paraphernalia, along with Tommy Chong and 55 others. And so that kind of took the wind out of my sales in terms of making bongs in Eugene, Oregon. And so with that, I, uh, I, I kind of reconfigured, recalibrated I still made glass in an art capacity out here in Maui, Hawaii, uh, turtles, whales, dolphins, all that fun stuff. And uh, lo and behold, um, you know, cannabis has become legal again uh, on a state by state level and starting with Colorado on a real um, uh, consumer level um, where Colorado was the first to say, um, you know, it's open for consumption the 21 and over. And so that was a big key mark for us to reignite the brand and make sure we kind of came back out on the on the level that we deserve uh, being around so long. And so now we're, like I said, we're blowing in, in the arts district of Las Vegas. Uh, we have an incredible team of really talented glass blowers. And, you know, we just did a TV show. Uh, that's going to drop here soon this summer. It's on Altered TV, A-L-T-R-D. Um, and uh, what happens there is we brought 12 of the best pipe makers we could find. And we put them against each other on three on three on three. And uh, at the end of all the different heats, the winner went home with $10,000 cash and, and they made the best pipe out there. And uh, it was a really fun show to do. And uh, we're really uh, blessed and honored to get it out here to the general public and, and show you guys kind of not only the technique and how we make this stuff and the materials behind it, but also the characters uh, that, are, that are glass pipe makers. Um, you know, they come from all walks of life for all different reasons. And um, we, we put some really good character background into the story. And uh, it's a six episode uh, TV show. Um, so we're going to be releasing them uh, every Sunday this summer. I don't have the exact dates yet. Uh, everything's working towards it. And uh, we're excited to see how it all goes and how it's received. It should be like on Netflix or something or like Amazon Prime. It sounds very interesting. Now, the only time I've ever seen glass blowing in full effect was in Harmony, California. It's got like a population of maybe five. Do okay. you know the place I'm talking about? It's really cool. It's like the perfect place to live. It's right near the beach and there's like five people in town. There's a creamery and a glass blown place. Wow, I do not know. but <laughs> And a chapel. <laughs> so that's gotta be like the ultimate life living in Maui, Hawaii. And a lot of people don't know about this uh, operations pipe dreams is what I think that's what it was called in 2003. How did you avoid going to jail? I mean, that's I think they busted like what 55 people or something in that. Yeah. So when they arrested us, everybody sat in there for like a week, you know, and that was the initial the initial run there. And then it was let out and every all the bank accounts were seized and, and businesses were seized. And, you know, it was all done. Uh, it was treated like, you know, straight, straight, you know, Coke dealer type, type, type treatment. And so, um, you know, lo and behold, uh, we all went back to the same judge in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And Tommy was the one that was kind of like talking, um, you know, about the judge out on the, on the stairs of the courthouse. And after that, I think that she wanted to just give him the time to kind of prove the point to everyone. Everyone else got electronic home monitoring. I mean, it was a two year investigation on us. And um, it was, you know, a real, you know, shot because once you're doing those kind of volumes and we, we pay taxes on everybody, we're a growing business um, to kind of come in and strike like that. Um, it just takes a, a lot out of uh, 70 employees. It's a lot out of Eugene, um, but every, oh, there's lesson learned. 
sorry about that. There's a okay. there's a lesson learned. Was that Janet Ashcroft that was the DA at the time? Uh, it was it was John Ashcroft and um, there you go. It was yeah. One that put the the blanket over the scales of justice at the Justice Department because he didn't want her boobs exposed on the in the in the Justice Department in that statue, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just really interesting beings. I, I believe that they used the justice system to make a political statement. Um, I think that now, um, you know, these laws haven't been changed. And it's people like you doing shows like this that get, get the voice going and you get people ignited. Um, but we need to kind of unite as a, as a, not only a industry, but a, a lifestyle, a culture, um, you know. And so if we can get some unification going and we can get, you know, elected officials in, um, it doesn't matter if they've smoked weed or have whatever dark past that they're going to get in and they're going to help, you know, the, the, the open mindset go come on here and, and, and unite people. I think cannabis is the one uniting factor we all have now, you know I mean? Black, white, gay, straight, it really doesn't matter. Everybody smokes. Even, you know, I believe that, it, you know, once, once Israel uh, puts more legalization out, once we get, if you imagine, if you can get Russia legalized marijuana, what would, would things be different? Um, I believe so. And I think it's important as all of us as little voices to have the whole, you know, chorus in harmony. And we can we can kind of, you know, make something real happen here still in our lifetimes. You know, we never realized or we never even thought in college that we're going to have legal weed. You know, you can go to the store. It looks like an iPhone store. You know, you buy weed. You know, that. So now it's it's so changed and different that it gives us, you know, real hope and resolution in, 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 in where we are in, in the space and as um you know, icons in the culture. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, like I said, with weed, it's a 50, 50 thing for me. Like, I think it's great. I think people should just legalize it. Just like prostitution should be legalized amongst other things. But there is this one thing, this one snag. I ride a motorcycle. The last thing, sometimes I have my helmet on sometimes, you know, I don't, but just depends where I'm going. And you have people driving by in cars. This is in California. And they're smoking it and they just blow it out the window and it goes like right in my face. And it's not necessarily great weed. You know what I mean? And I think there should, wow. do you think there should be some like um, some kind of like a medium where it's so much you could smoke while driving or you shouldn't smoke at all while you're driving. So, 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 so to answer that question um, uh, um, intelligently, you know, my vote right now is that we hire an independent, you know, consortium to do a major test right now, a real, you know, neutral test on how THC affects driving. And we can publish the results and really kind of dig in here and see where and what and why and, and, and how to negate all this stuff. Um, I think that there, there's probably ways. Um, and I think, yeah, you can't be too stoned or too intoxicated on anything driving around. Uh, I ride a motorcycle as well. And um, that's all I do is I look out for other people. That's, that's all I'm doing when I'm driving around, you know, in Vegas, in Vegas, especially when I get out of the desert, I'm good. Oh yeah. I love going to death Valley. That's like my favorite trip, just going up there. Cause there's nothing there. There's like jawbone. What is it? Jawbone bend. And there's a sketchy like area with a gas station and a sandwich shop. That's like a whole other story. Um, Oh, yeah, but I agree with you on that. And maybe you should be the one to have this whole bill passed or just somehow have that, you know, looked at more because it's kind okay. of, it's, it's sort of a serious thing. I mean, back when I was around your age and you said you were like selling weed or you were um, designing these, uh, these bongs, I was actually dealing weed. Not a lot of people know this, but I worked at a record store in Manhattan and my boss had this really special weed like Walla Walla, Washington, Georgia Peach. And the stuff smelled like so amazing. So of course, weed like that deserves a bong like yours, obviously. And um, if you didn't have the chance to come back and do all of this, like let's say things went really sour after 2003, what do you think you'd be doing? Well, uh, again, I'm an artist uh, deep in, inside. And so for me, you know, painting is a big passion of mine. I did a lot of painting over the years um, and I do a lot of sculpting and I do a lot of, of other kind of glass blowing, you know, making from chandeliers to lighting to whatever. So it's, it's just a creative. Um, I'm sure I'd be doing something creative, you know, whether it's, uh, um, you know, building something or, 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 or putting, putting together something that's just, just things that inspire others. Uh, that's what kind of turns me on. So I think I'd be there, be there or, you know, just right now the bong um, it, it provides me 
number one, it's kind of like as an artist to, to find a voice in art is very difficult. You're almost lost at sea as a little fish with all this, you know, all the humans and all the individuals out there. So it's a constant struggle to stick out uh, amongst your peers and be able to sell the art. So, it, you know, something that, that this is looked at right now, there's the, my, my, the work, the value of my work. So I have a team making, you know, pieces and I conduct the team. I might tell them more blue, more red, or, or, or try to focus on these kind of things today or custom work that comes down the line. I also blow parts of the pieces and blow glass myself. But in, within all that, the pieces have, and have gained value over time. Uh, certain ones break and they're gone forever. Other ones hold together and they're still around. There's a Facebook fans group about 10,000 strong of um, collectors of the work. The work, which is called pre-op work, which is pre-operation pipe dreams, pre-2003. That's the stuff that's gone up 10 to 20 times in value. So I feel like at the moment, by creating all these bongs out of the Las Vegas Dream Factory, they're all done by hand in America. You'd have a hard time naming five big time glass factories that make pipes in America right now. Most of our stuff comes from overseas. So we're a real added value, especially in the downtown arts district of Las Vegas. Um, we, we, are, we are creating, you know, beautiful objects from raw material in our factory, our 5,000 square foot factory. So it adds an element of creative to the whole thing. And these bongs now are kind of like what Andy Warhol, if he was selling soup cans, it's your way of, of, of kind of getting uh, a timestamp of the Jerome Baker art during this time. Um, all of them, you know, rate, go up in value as you hold on to them. We do limited runs of everything we do. And the, the long-term staple stuff is all handmade. So that's where it's all at right now. Like people come in, they drive from all over the country just to come to the studio and buy a special bong for them or for their, their anniversary or whatever it might be. People bring their brother's ashes to us to put into a marble to put on the back of a bong. Um, all kinds of rappers, celebrities, rock stars, they're all coming in or calling up to get, you know, a custom piece done. Um, so that's what we kind of offer right there. It's almost like, you know, we're creating art right now, right in the arts district that this long-term legacy, you know, will, will, I, I, I would imagine will be blue chip art as we move forward. It sounds like it should be like in Monterey because up there they have a lot of like one of a kind type stores or, um, there's the Thomas Kincaid store, but just really fine art. And I see what you do yeah. is fine art completely. Now you guys also built the world biggest bong. How long did that take? And most of all, um, like how big was the bong? Did anyone actually smoke out of it? Yeah, the bong, the bong took, um, you know, weeks to make. Uh, we, we documented a lot of it on a, um, on, a, on a little video clip called Redemption Bong. And that's on leafly.tv. So you can Google Redemption leafly.tv take a look at the cut and it tells the story of not only a Jerome Baker but this, the, these giant bongs one of them we made it 24 feet tall it was on Fremont Street in Las Vegas for a little more than a year and um, they made an elevator to the top of it it was a big big attraction down there and yes they did smoke out of it the last day it was there they were too scared to smoke out of it because they didn't want to get kicked out by the city the whole time but finally they got kicked out and they had to do one big night of smoking it. So there is some documentation of that. Um, but yeah, the piece lives right now. It's going to be resurrected in Planet 13 is the rumor for me. Um, so we'll see how all that goes. And um, yeah, that's just a, 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 was an incredible uh, undertaking to make something like that and make it out of glass. And we did it all in uranium glass. So it seemed to glow in the black lights and it just really popped. That's so exactly. super fun fun super fun project right now we're working on a huge project we got a studio in soho uh in new york right down where um where canal meets broadway street uh, and uh we're super excited to be there we're gonna have three stations there blowing glass that's a seven-story building the top floor is a cannabis lounge and the rooftop smoking deck um so hopefully we'll have some jasmine st Clair, uh you know interviews going on up top for sure and, I'll go uh, there because I go to New yeah. York. I'll go. Yeah. And so it's called the House of Cannabis. Um, it's a seven story attraction in, uh, in Soho that's going to just really warp minds for sure. We're really excited to be part of it. Yeah, I think I'll have to have someone like show me exactly how to smoke. Um, like I like hash. I'm more of a hash person. Maybe it's just from living in Europe all those years. And maybe I just have to get the right type of hash in there and have someone like guide me through it so I don't 
cough and ruin my uh, my throat. It's even if you smoke joints, uh, you know, we, we make really elaborate joint holders. Uh, we just had a project where we made 30 bongs for Fred Siegel. So they're going up to Sunset Boulevard. They're going to be in the Fred Siegel store up there right now. Just nicer pieces, smaller pieces. You know, maybe if, you, if it hurts your throat, you want something tiny uh, and you want to just pack a tiny little little taster of, of weed in there. It's not to pack big burly hits or anything like that. And um you know, yeah, it's, you know, yeah, I'll, we'll show you for sure. You have to come by the studio someday. No, definitely. And by the way, what kind of motorcycle do you have? I have a 2021 Harley Davidson Lowrider. Oh, you look like a Harley have? guy. Me, I have two. I have a, um, a 2021 Candy Apple Red Ninja 400 with ABS brakes. And I have a Kawasaki Vulcan 650S. That's the one I take on the longer trips because that's like a cruiser style. And I love riding the bike. Guys are always like, hey, would you give me a ride? You don't put a guy in the back of the motorcycle. Like anyone can do that. (laughs) That's so not macho. Um, And so you have a a movie, Pipe Dreams. Tell us about that. Because I saw the trailer for it. And I like the um, the theme song and everything. It's pretty cool. So, so there's a there, so so the one little movie I did. It's a cut on on YouTube basically, and I made, we made it out here in Hawaii. It's called Pipe Dreams, and it's about uh, us making these giant bongs. For for me, making making the piece is the whole experience of it. It's working with a team of people. Uh, we do it once in a lifetime for each piece, and we do we use a variety of people from around the globe to work on these things. So it's that experience that I try to document in some of these movies. Um, another one on there is called how to make a bong. Um, and so I, I, part of the, 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 the glass, um, the intrigue is that it's one time, one piece, you can't replicate it ever really these big ones. And so with that, uh, um, it's documented on video is precious to us because once the piece is gone, that's the, that's all we've seen. Of it. That's whoever sees it, sees it. Other than that, if we've died with media or photos or something like that we can make it live a lot longer and get a lot more out of you know the voice of the artwork and then what do you feel like um like so there are like two questions right there okay first and foremost uh how many hours a day do you spend doing this and do you ever take time off it seems like with everything going on that you've mentioned you don't take time off (laughs) Yeah, that's a big point of contention at the moment. So, um, yeah, we, you know, I've been working really hard for the past five years, just kind of making the brand thrive uh, and, and expanding the footprint. And so now um, we're bringing in more partners and we're going to you know, go on a, on, a, on a much more national level uh, just in terms of merchandise, uh, cannabis, uh, glass, all the stuff with the Jerome Baker brand on it. And so with that being said, uh, that's kind of our, 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 our bigger picture play is, is so I can, I don't have to be, you know, running around, uh, you know, ch- you know, like a chicken sometimes uh, going to all different places, all different events and, and being responsible for a number of different things. So yeah, we're, 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 we're moving towards expansion right now. And we're going to work working with really incredible partners on that. And that's our big play. And where would you say your home base is now, Hawaii? You know, I go back and forth from here to Las Vegas. I would say, you know, uh, home base right now is over in Nevada. I'm over there a lot working, making sure the shop's running. And then I'm here with my family as much as possible. So um, it's been a a really, you know, tough balance um, in terms of just running life. I I kind of have sacrificed everything, you know, everything else except for the business. And I think like... You know, it's a bit narcissistic, I'm sure. I'm sure any girl that dates me, you know what I mean, to come up with that at some point. Um, but I really feel that I'm blessed and honored to have this brand that I work for. You know, I started this on a Grateful Dead tour. I was called J- Jerome Baker. Jerome is Jerry Garcia. Baker's getting baked. Uh, and, you know, we kind of named it after him and, and hired a bunch of friends. And this has been giving me my paycheck. You know, if I wasn't doing this, um, or at least when I wasn't doing this, I wasn't really super passionate about, you know, um, the whole picture. Uh, so this, this kind of runs the whole picture of passion for me and, 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 it, and it allows that, that energy to flow through the business. So I think, you know, it's been important for me to do all that right now. And, and I have a, um, I have a, uh, you know, an end game here. I, I would like to just, you know, surf a lot more for sure. Uh, but we'll get there. I, I feel confident. You seem really young, so I don't think you um, 
should even be thinking about retirement right now, but what would be your ultimate foot? What? Yeah. I'm sorry. I came from the gym and I was just running around. Um, what would you say the ultimate footprint is that you'd like to leave as your legacy? Yeah. So the ultimate footprint I like to leave as my legacy is just to be able to inspire other people to do really cool stuff. Um, so I feel like I was guided, guided by the light into that position by being inspired by other artists. And it's almost like, wow, you know, this really cool takeaway that I think others should experience as well. And so I feel that my, you know, networking um, um, sophistication and, 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 and the bongs themselves have allowed me to kind of navigate all that, that, you know, supposed, you know, power or legacy I want to leave uh, for others. That's amazing. Well, that's good. And it's not narcissistic to like work a lot and be attached to your work, especially when it's something you've built from the bottom up. You know what I mean? Same can be said about me because I get involved in so many of my own things that I just have to do that because at the end of the day, <laughs> it's myself left to like market. <laughs> if that uh-huh. makes any sense. Yeah, I'm fifty-one right now. So, so, I, so I've been, you know, I've been at it a long time. You're sure. what? I'm fifty. Ah, uh, right. Okay. You know how I looked as good? Cannabis. Huh? I looked as good because of cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> When's your birthday? Dare I ask? 122.71. Ah, that's a great year. Absolutely. Very much yeah. so. And if people want to look out for all of your projects, aside from Instagram, like where could they go on the World Wide Web? Yeah, you go to JeromeBaker.com and that's our website. Um, and that's, you know, that was my website even before I was arrested. It got confiscated by the by the feds and they, they put an American flag on it for about six years. And at one point it went up for auction and I got, I got, I got it back. So uh, that's my, my confiscated federal property that was, you know, re- that was real early on too in the internet game. So yeah, JeromeBaker.com. You can go there and check out this stuff and um, you know, just check out the, the Instagram, you know, we have the operation pipe dreamers. That's the new TV show coming out. Um, and that'll be coming across this summer for sure. Yeah, and I hope it gets picked up by a really big network because it deserves to be seen. And a lot of people need to really band together and make a bigger change. And it's, it's like I always say, change always starts at a local level and smaller things and becoming one big, huge movement. So I hope it goes well, like seriously. And um, the other thing is, what are the price points on most of your uh, your pipes? You know, our, our biggest seller uh, is called a cakey. Uh, which, uh, which is our little baby pipe, uh, a bong, and it has a little element of sculpture on the back. Um, we run a program where you can, you can make an appointment and do a virtual tour of the gallery and pick out your piece, um, or we can pick something for you. And it's kind of like Harry Potter's wand shop. You know, the bong kind of picks you. So with that being said, it's about a $225 all-in with shipping piece, and it's off of the JeromeBaker.com website. Anybody can go look at that. And that's our kind of average entry piece that people kind of get into it, they get the feel of the bong, and then they kind of expand out from there. Maybe if their stoner grandma smokes and they want to get her a piece with her, with, their, with her baseball team on the back of it or something like that, we go into custom work like that. We do a lot of different custom work. Um, it's expensive, but it's custom and it's nice, and people you know, use them for a lifetime. I have definitely second-generation people coming in with bongs that they're either their dad died and left them or their dad's given them. Um, so that's a lot real special to see when they, when they, you know, these kind of like, like objects are passed down through the generations now. So super fun. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'll, I'll eventually consider like getting something like really nice because I've seen your stuff and it's amazing, but the fact that it's American made and it's made right here in the States appeals to me. And I hope everyone who does smoke that actually listens to this, buy something from them because it's amazing. Plus you're supporting an American, um, an American company, which is very important these days, but yeah. So uh, the Soho, when is Soho opening up? Any date for that? Predicted September. That's the deal. They're over there now. They're putting the scaffolding up. They're doing, they're painting the buildings. They're, you know, it's, it's a pretty huge undertaking for these guys. So it's called house of cannabis. Um, I'm sure they'll, they'll have a website up soon and definitely keep an eye on our Instagram. We're going to keep you updated on the shop build out out there and kind of, you know, we, we use Instagram as a voice of kind of telling what's going on with the brand right now and what's happening. A lot of people watch the little feed that I do on the back end. And, you know, it's it's a fun way of kind of showing the, the lifestyle is, is, is also just as important as the artwork. 
<clears throat> so that's that's what's fun. Absolutely. So I'll definitely plug all of the um the links. And thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'll let everyone know how it turns out when I uh, take my first hit off one of those bungs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And like I said, when you get a chance, let's let's have you down to the Dream Factory. It's down in the Arts District of Las Vegas. Um, just let me know when you're available, and we'll make sure you get a good tour and you can come through and check it out. Okay, cool. Absolutely. Thank you very much.